everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Dani and on today's video we'll be talking about popular places to visit in Liguria. If you've never heard about Liguria before, Liguria is the Italian Riviera. So it's about the area that goes from the French border with Côte d'Azur, which is basically the French Riviera, and goes towards Tuscany. So all of this area is called Italian Riviera or also Liguria. And I'm sorry if my Italian pronunciation won't be very good in this video, but I will try my best. This area of Italy is especially popular for its pretty colorful coastal towns such as Cinque Terre and Portofino, but Genova is also another popular place to visit there. While Genova is not as pretty as the other two, it has plenty to visit and so many people are eager to visit. Before we carry on with this video, as you guys know, one of my topics on this channel is about off the beaten path and I try to talk as much as possible about every single destination of places that generally are less explored. And the reason why I'm doing this video about popular places to visit in the Italian Riviera is because I want to bring you another video with the less popular places. And if I just talk about the less popular places, you guys will miss a bit. So that is the reason why on today's video we'll be talking about popular places to visit in Liguria and then the next week I'll be bringing you another video on off the beaten path in this specific area of Italy. So as I mentioned, the three top destinations of Liguria will be Portofino, Cinque Terre and Genova. I will say Genova because it sounds better for me, but as you know, when you write it in English, it will be Genoa. Even though Portofino is one of the top places to visit in Liguria, I think it's still fairly unknown comparing to other places in Italy such as Amalfi Coast or Rome or Venice. So it really is an area that you'll find less tourists. It was August when we visited in 2018 and even though Cinque Terre had quite a lot of people visiting, I would still not compare that crowd to the crowd in Venice or Rome, like not at all. So if you don't like the crowds, even the popular places in Liguria can be fairly okay. Just be prepared to see a lot of people when you visit Cinque Terre especially, but you might be lucky as well and you might not have so many people comparing to other places in Italy. Now to make this easier for you guys, at least in terms of visualizing, as usual I'll be writing a blog post about this and on my blog post I'll be having a map so you can easily see where are these locations on the map. Now without further ado, let's start with your first location and I'm gonna start from west to east, from the French border towards Tuscany. So the first top place to visit in Liguria is Genova, aka Genoa if you want to write that in English. So Genova is not a pretty coastal town like the other two and like many other they'll be talking in another video, but Genova is quite popular for being a big commercial center. Now because it is a big commercial center, you will find it quite industrial. So you will have a pretty big harbor, you will have a very large medieval old center and there will be plenty of museums and historical buildings as well. So if you are into culture and into history, Genova will certainly have something for you. Genova is also very popular for its aquarium, which is the largest in Italy and one of the largest in Europe. So if you are one of those people who look forward to see beautiful places like me for example, then Genova will probably not be the one for you and you will find it quite an attractive and industrial. Genova was the place that I liked the least in the whole Liguria area and to be honest with you is simply because one, it wasn't as attractive. Uh, visually comparing to the other places in Liguria and it's not my type of place and secondly because it was quite dirty. I remember being in a bus stop and there was piss marks all over the place and the actual bus stop stick and you could see the marks going all over from the bench towards the floor and there were lots of homeless people and guys hanging and pissing in the middle of the street and all of that just made me like you know what I really don't like this place. Um, but again, if you like culture, if you like history, probably you will enjoy Genova. Lots of people recommend others to visit that area, so here it is, it's part of the list. It's not my favorite, but you do you. That being said, another great thing about Genova is its access to other places in Liguria and its affordable prices. So if you're looking for a place to stay based at, Genova might be a good option because of its great bus services and train services that you can take to get to any other place in Liguria and also the prices will be a lot more affordable. So if you are on a budget, Genova might even be a good option for you. The 
second popular place to visit in Liguria is Portofino as I mentioned in the beginning of this video. Now Portofino is a very fancy destination because it's generally associated with celebrities. Many many celebrities used to visit this place and even nowadays they do and because of that you'll find plenty of fancy restaurants, luxurious boutiques and shops. And that explains why parking there is so expensive and why you might want bringing your own food instead of eating there. That being said, it's not just a place for celebrities. There are lots of tourists going there every single year and so tourism is also a great thing in there. Now the reason why people visit this place is not only because of its association with celebrities and VIPs, but it's also because of its beauty. Portofino is truly beautiful. You have a small square, a harbor in front of the small square and around plenty of colorful houses and also some churches that make it really really beautiful. You can access Portofino by foot if you want to hike from Santa Margherita Ligure or you can take a train to Santa Margherita Ligure and then from there you can take a bus all the way to Portofino. You can also access Portofino through boat if you want but this will pretty much be your options. If you want to drive I wouldn't recommend you to take your car over there again because it's simply too expensive and the tickets can be priced at 5 euros and 50 cents an hour. And the reason why the access to Portofino is a little bit tricky comparing to other areas is because it is kind of in a dead end. Instead of being along the coast and throughout a road, you'll have to get off Santa Margherita Ligure and then after the hike to Portofino, you can't go anywhere else. There is actually plenty to do in Portofino, even though it is a small town and I wouldn't say you would need more than one day to be there, to be fair. But if you enjoy hiking, there's plenty of options to hike. You can hike all the way to the church of St. George if you want to have beautiful views to the harbor and if you want to have even a better view then you can hike all the way up to Castle Brown. In Castle Brown you'll have to pay 5 euros, at least that's what I paid back in 2018 and from there you won't have much to see. There are some cool galleries inside, a little bit of history about Portofino. It also has some um, graphics explaining you which type of species you can find in the ocean right next to Portofino area and then finally you'll have this top view towards Portofino that in my opinion is the best view ever. You don't only have these two opportunities to hike, you can also hike towards San Fertuoso. Now San Fertuoso is a destination that I'll be talking in our next video but to get an idea San Fertuoso it's like a small beach in the middle of nowhere with a really hard access with an abbey at the end and it's just stunning with crystal waters. So for you to access that place, you can take a boat, but you can also go on a hike. Now the hike is stunning and I would really recommend you guys to do it at least one way and then the other way you can come on the boat. Um, again, I'll be talking more in detail about this place in our next video, but this is another hike that you can do. Not only that, if you like water activities, you can also go kayaking or you can go on a private boat tour. You can also go snorkeling and diving. Another thing to have in consideration about Portofino is that during the night is very different than during the day. During the day, you'll see many tourists just like you and you'll find people hiking from one place to the other, sweaty, you'll find people going on a water activities as I mentioned but overnight you'll be surrounded by people dressing really really fancy clothes so they can go on a fancy dinner right by the harbor with candles around them enjoying a very expensive seafood plate. the top place to visit Liguria out of these three is Cinque Terre. You've probably heard about Cinque Terre before and Cinque Terre means five lands or five towns. These five towns from west to east and I'm really sorry about my pronunciation but I'm sure I'm gonna try my best um, are Monteroso, Vernazza, Corniglia, Manarola and Rio Maggiore. So these five towns are very different to one another although some people would consider Vernazza and Manarola kind of similar. So basically from these five towns, the three most popular are again Vernazza Manarola and Rio Maggiore. Monteroso it's mostly popular for the beach and there is like a very nice rock formation in there but it's less attractive comparing to the other three and the least popular of all of them is Corniglia because you have to hike a lot of steps and I really mean it. When we went there, there was a guy playing an instrument in the middle of the street so that was super super nice. 
uh, but it is indeed not as pretty and attractive as the other three uh, towns. So if you don't have enough time to see all five, maybe you can skip Corniglia. That being said, ideally you would visit the whole five. In my opinion, it was worth it going to Corniglia, but I know many people who don't consider it to be worth it all the hike up and then back down as well, because you just can't go anywhere from there. So you have always to go down to the train station. Now you might be asking what Cinque Terre has to offer because if we're comparing to the other two, uh, Geneva has a lot of history and culture to offer to you. So if you're into museums and buildings and architecture, then that is the place for you. Portofino is more of a beauty town with um, nature activities such as hiking and water activities and Cinque Terre is a little bit different. Now Cinque Terre is popular for its pretty houses and just because every single corner is beautiful. Not only that, you can hike all the way from the first town to the last town, so there is plenty of hiking opportunities. I know that some of these hikes were actually closed, um, at least when we went there back in 2018, but you will be able to hike from most of them at least. Now, if you don't wanna hike all the way from one town to the other, because it is very strenuous and you'll eventually get really tired from hiking all the time, and not only that, but you also have to pay for some of these hikes. You can also go to a certain point of the hike where you don't have to pay and you will still be able to have a very, very good view towards the towns. Now, on our case, there was only one time that we had to hike a little bit up because we wanted to see a certain view and the guy at that pain point actually understood that we just wanted to take the pictures and he was very kind to us and just let us go through until we went to the viewpoint and then we went all the way back. There is also plenty of options to just take some sun baths and enjoy the water. Now depending on how the tide is and just be aware that if the waves are really strong you should not get near the water at all but when the water is calm you can truly enjoy it and go along with other Italian people who will be just chilling around in the water with the beautiful background of the colorful houses behind them. So there are three different ways to visit these five towns. So the first one I just mentioned, hiking, then you can take a train from all of the towns. Just make sure you validate it because otherwise you might get a pretty bad fine. And then lastly, you can also hop on a boat tour. We'll take you from one town to another town, but they will only run during summer and it depends on the weather and the tide conditions. When we visited, the waves were too strong. So actually, and unfortunately, we couldn't go on a boat tour. Because Cinque Terre is so popular and touristy, you'll definitely find plenty of options to buy souvenirs and they also have plenty of these shops that sell local art if you are interested in what Italians do in this area and if you like seafood then this is going to be an amazing place for you. If you're hungry when you're in Cinque Terre make sure you try the fried seafood or the fried fish because it's a local specialty and is really really delicious. And those were the three top places to visit in Liguria if you're into popular destinations. Now as you guys know I write and do videos about off the beaten path destinations so the next video is going to be a little bit different. Now what I think people truly miss out when they visit Liguria is that they only focus their itinerary around Portofino, Genova and Cinque Terre and they miss on a lot. So on the next video I'll make sure to bring you a very very good list of off the beaten path destinations in Liguria so maybe I can change your mind and I can help you to decide adding some of these destinations onto your itinerary and not just stick to the three places that everybody goes as always guys i truly appreciate you thank you so much for watching this video as you know i don't have a lot of video content from my past travels because um my camera got stolen and i lost my action camera twice in my previous trips so i hope these videos are helpful for you even if i'm mostly talking and using pictures to show you what you can have in every single place now on my instagram i do have highlights from every single of this place so if you want head over to my account so you can check my highlights and you'll be having a more visual idea in terms of video of where we went uh, what we did in every of these places now if you're new to the channel please make sure you subscribe to it and you click on the notification bell so you get updates every time i release a new video and please guys i really appreciate every time you leave a thumbs up and a comment as i want to bring this video to as many people as possible so i can help them out in their travel and also in terms of getting to know every country better before they visit it thank you so much once again have a great week and i'll see you on the next video goodbye
camel on airplane. Go on, mate. Come on. Noisy. Monte Rosso. Monte Rosso. Monte Rosso. Monte Rosso. <laughs> I can't say this.